Not only is there a new Samsung phone that's thinner, lighter, and rocking a better camera, but there's a new player in the repairability game. The EU. They rated this a C on the repairability score, but an A for durability. Let's see what that means, and let's see what Samsung sacrificed to get this foldable so thin. This thing has improved significantly, but I don't think I'll ever be able to get over that. That's insane. That's a massive camera bump. So when they give us the stats for how thick the phone is folded and unfolded, it never includes this massive camera bump. And it's just, it's not ideal. We'll remove the peel. Ooh, very satisfying. The crease on this phone is extremely hard to notice. It is shipped open, so it hasn't been creased a bunch yet. They did a few strange things this year, like completely removing S Pen support. You can't use the S Pen with this phone at all. They also removed the under display camera. This used to be covered by the display, but now it's just a hole punch cutout. Something people are complaining about though, is the lack of the ability to get it to bend like that. To get it this thin, they definitely had to do a redesign on the inside. So we're gonna check out what changes they- Allow talkback to make and manage phone calls? No. Allow. Anyway, let's go ahead and cook the Z Fold 7. I think we're gonna have to cook it like that. Bit awkward, but that's how it's supposed to go. While this is cooking, let's talk about what the EU is doing because I absolutely love this. So they recently introduced their rating system, which rates the phone's repairability, durability, energy efficiency, battery cycle, IP water resistance and dust resistance rating, and battery life. They also require companies to provide parts for seven years after the device is released, which is a huge win. How do they calculate repairability though? That's the question I had, and it's by how hard the phone is to take apart, whether the parts are available, and whether the repair manuals are available. Very cool move by the EU. We'll put this aside and take the Z Fold 7 off the cooker. So to help me open this up, since it's kind of hard, we're gonna be using this jig over here, and we're actually gonna be opening up both this back glass and the outer display at the same time. So we're gonna close this guy, and we're going to put this in here like that. Now we can flap this over and position the suction cup right where I need it. Now we can just spin this, and the goal is for this to do most of the hard work for me doesn't always work out that way, but I'm hoping it does. Apply some alcohol and it's already, oh, it's already coming off. I love this tool. This tiny device just replaced my messy notes. I tore the last one down and I was impressed, but this one is even more impressive. It's called the Plod Note Pin and it clips to anything. I've started to really rely on this, maybe a little too much. The app that comes with it is where it gets crazy. I can ask it anything from pulling key info from past notes to turning long conversations into organized texts or to-do lists. It even generates custom mind maps depending on what I'm working on, whether I'm planning a video, managing my team, or even prepping legal documents. There's no more digging through cluttered notes, just ask and it pulls out what matters. Phones get interrupted by calls and messages, which is literally why I have do not disturb on right now, but the note pin doesn't. It stays focused with hours of battery life. And if you're wondering about privacy, everything is stored offline first and encrypted when synced to your phone. Now, if you're like me and wanna know what's inside this little guy, we can open it up. There's literally no wasted space in here. It's got strong magnets, just enough battery to keep it light, but also reliable. Check out the plot note pin in the description. Your brain will thank you. Blah. We'll pull out a plastic prying card. I really hope the outer display goes this smoothly because this was pretty easy. I'm always cautious around this area though because with the edge, this bump was just glued over the back glass. So I'm thinking that they did the same thing with this year's fold. We can take it out of the rig now. This glass is actually extremely durable. It's the Gorilla Glass Victus 2, which probably contributed to the EU's A rating for durability. This one's ready to come off and I had a sneak peek. It does look different, but we're gonna do this side first so we could take off both at the same time. Unfortunately, this was not as easy. The camera bumps made it impossible to use the clamp properly, so I had to resort to just using a suction cup and plenty of heat and then a thin metal pry tool to wedge a gap and allow the alcohol to soften the adhesive. Just getting the display to lift up from the frame took about 15 minutes, which is extremely long. Once there was a gap though, it was strictly suction cup plus alcohol because prying into this display is far too risky. Before I fully open it up, I have to say this front cover display, an absolute nightmare to remove and the EU definitely broke this going in. I'm just kidding, but probably not. Anyway, let's go ahead and open it up. 
That is the Z Fold 7. This looks very different from last year's. They did a complete redesign on the inside and uh, it's very compact. There's no space waste in this guy. So taking a look at the right side over here, we can go ahead and remove the front cover display. Before I go ahead and unscrew everything here, let's talk about this battery. Look how long this is. I don't think I've ever seen a battery this long in a phone. And obviously this is how they managed to keep the same capacity as they did with the Z Fold 6. We'll hit this phone with a bunch of unscrews. It's nice to see Samsung sticking with the Phillips screws and not diverting to different types of screws. Definitely helps with repairability. There's so much to look at here. I almost don't know where to start, but I guess we'll start with the speaker down here. We should be able to just pop this off. This is one of two loudspeakers on this device. It has a rubber seal right over here. And I'm not sure if this is a good thing because it's a little too thin. The sound quality might take a hit. And under the shield is the display connector. We'll pop this shield off. Everything here is insanely thin. I've never seen Samsung do something like this before. These connectors connect this board to the main motherboard. At the top, we have the earpiece speaker. It's also super thin this year. Samsung really sized down pretty much everything in this device from what I could tell so far. We have our 10 megapixel camera and over here, it looks like we have the ambient light sensor and the proximity sensor, which you can actually see through the display. There's a cutout here for both. And it looks like Samsung reverted to their old battery pull tab method, which I am not happy about. And you're about to find out why. These pull tabs absolutely suck, especially with a battery this long. Pulling up on the battery like you're supposed to actually causes it to bend, which can severely damage it and increase the chances of an accident. I ended up caving and just using alcohol instead. Samsung, please stop using this. Oh my god. Yeah, based on that experience right there, I'm seriously doubting the EU's rating of a C. This is feeling a lot more like a D. What? The big long battery that was insanely difficult to remove is 2,210 milliamp hours and unfortunately, it'll never look the same again. RIP to boy. Moving on to the other side where the brains of the phone are, the motherboard. But first, let's take a look at that back glass because these bumps are absolutely crazy. So just like I suspected, the bumps seem to be glued on top of the actual back glass. And if you're prying or removing the glass, be wary of this side because it's probably a little weaker than the rest of it. Speaking of camera bumps, over here we have the 200 megapixel camera. Up here we have the 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. And down here we have the 10 megapixel telephoto camera. And if we turn this to the side, those camera bumps, um, they're compensating for how big the cameras are, but I guess that's the only way Samsung knows how to do it. So we'll go ahead and remove this bracket, which also includes the 15 watt wireless charger. We'll put that over here. So something that's kind of shocking me is if we look here to our left, we can see the 5G millimeter wave antenna, which we don't usually get in Canada. I'm not sure why, but it is here on this phone. So maybe they're starting to introduce it. We'll go ahead and disconnect every flex cable we can see. The motherboard should just pop right off now if all goes well. There we go. What the hell? This thing's tiny. I'm kind of at a loss of words here because this thing is incredibly thin and it only looks like there's one layer. Usually with compact devices like this, there's multiple layers, sometimes even three or four. This one only appears to have one. This also is housing the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 3 chip with 12 gigabytes of RAM. But if you get the one terabyte variant, you actually get 16 gigabytes of RAM. So kind of interesting. Moving on, we have the 10 megapixel front camera here for the inner display. And we also have the next battery, which also has the same pull tabs that I absolutely despise. And running over it, we have a flex cable with a screw. It's very hard to access the batteries in these devices and very hard to remove them also. I give up using these stupid pull tabs. We're just gonna put some alcohol in there. Samsung, why did you go back to these, please? Change it back to the ones that hug the battery. I like those more. Usually I always put these phones back together after a teardown and they all work, but this one, I'm not so sure it'll be working perfectly, but we're about to find out once I remove this, the charging port and the inner display. So stay tuned for that. This battery is a 2,226 milliamp hour battery. So not too far off from the really long one that we threw over there. That's just now chilling. We'll put that aside. 
Samsung phones differ from region to region, which is why they have North America checked off here because obviously we're in North America. They also have sub here. Subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the video. This USB-C port charges at 25 watts and is USB 3.2 Gen 1. This is the part that I've been dreading the most, removing this. These are notoriously hard to remove without breaking and they're incredibly expensive. We'll go ahead and start by removing the plastic around the display. So this display this year is a full eight inches with 120 Hertz adaptive refresh rate and has about a 90.4% screen to body ratio. Now we can finally remove the inner display. Removing this was difficult, but it wasn't as difficult as I thought because of this metal sheet on the back here. It helped keep everything together, but the thing is, this probably doesn't work anymore. I guess we'll find out at the end when I put this all back together. Let's take a look at this hinge. So they're calling it the Armor Flex Hinge and it's apparently 27% thinner and 43% lighter than the Fold 6's hinge. It doesn't really give as much as I thought it would, especially with all the internals removed from the actual housing. But uh, this phone is missing something, the cooling. There only appears to be a graphite film under the inner display and a thermal pad under the motherboard. No vapor chamber like the Z Fold 6, which might be an issue. I actually think the EU was a little bit generous with their C rating for repairability. It's extremely difficult to remove the outer display, the batteries, and of course the inner display without breaking them. If I had to rate it based on their system, I'd probably give this more of a D. It's not impossible to repair but it's quite difficult. Putting this back together was actually pretty easy and the outer display, he made it, he's good. The inner display though, your boy did not make it. Extremely hard to remove these without breaking them and that's exactly what happened. All in all though, this device is insanely impressive. The sacrifices you make when purchasing a foldable phone are slowly starting to become non-existent. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit that bell button. I'll see you in the next one, peace.